First, there will be a demonstration on some stretches to help restore the internal rotation of the shoulder. These stretches should be held mildly for around 30 seconds before and after a pitcher picks up a baseball. The sleeper stretch. Many experts in the, in the field do not suggest this stretch because studies have shown that it targets the posterior capsule of the shoulder instead of the posterior rotator cuff muscles. However, Dr. Wilk and Mike Reynold have discovered a way to modify the stretch so that it really targets the posterior musculature. And I like this stretch because young baseball players who don't have manual therapy can do this on their own. And so there's three important cues for this stretch. The first being the scat position. Notice how I just rolled over onto my throwing shoulder to make sure that my scat was fully retracted and that my shoulder was, is nice and tucked right behind my ear. So that when I push my hand down, the humeral head isn't gliding upwards, which will create an impingement. We want a nice stretch on the back of the shoulder and the athlete should never feel anything in the front. Second, notice how my shoulders, the opposite throwing shoulder is tilted back about 45 degrees so that the chest is almost facing the ceiling. Um, this again, this helps direct the stretch to the posterior muscles instead of the posterior capsule and uh, creates a little more subacromial space so that we don't have impingement symptoms. The last cue is to be gentle, and I brought in the front view to really hammer this point home. So notice how much room there is between my hand and the ground. It's, about a, it's at about a 45 degree angle, which is plenty of internal rotation. So if you have an athlete who's cranking his hand all the way to the ground, I can guarantee you that he's not in the correct position. So we want to be gentle on the back side of the shoulder because being too rough will cause more harm than good. Next is the cross-body stretch. The results of a recent study done by Dr. McClure show that the cross-body stretch actually restored interrotation more effectively than the sleeper stretch. However, they did perform a modified version which is shown in this video. The key to the cross-body stretch is much like the sleeper stretch where we have to make sure that the scapula is retracted. And so it helps by either lying on the ground or using the wall. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my shoulder is nice and tight and tucked back and I'm just gently pulling up, pulling across on my elbow. Now I'm not cranking it very aggressively, but there's just a nice gentle stretch to the back of the shoulder. So here's the same cross body stretch, but instead of lying on the ground, I'm using the wall. Again, I'm making sure that scap is retracted and just giving a gentle pull on the throwing arm of my elbow. Now, after an athlete performs some gentle static stretches to restore the internal rotation, it's important to get some blood flowing to the active muscles before we start the strengthening exercises. So this clip is just some short dynamic movement drills at the shoulder um, to work on internal rotation, external rotation, shoulder flexion, flexion and extension. So these dynamic warm-ups are pretty common and I'm sure most youth athletes do them regularly. But I guess the main important cue for this is to make sure that the hands are not cranking way behind our backs, just cranking on the anterior part of our shoulder because they get cranked on enough every time we throw a baseball. So just be aware of the hand cranking way behind the head or behind the shoulder when doing these. Based on the study done by Sports Health, the deceleration phase of the pitching motion is the most violent. With that being said, the infraspinatus and teres minor need to be extremely strong. However, the purpose of a pre-throw warm-up is just to wake these muscles up and get them properly firing before an athlete picks up a baseball. I would recommend only one set of 10 to 15 reps before throwing. The goal is not to fatigue the rotator cuff muscles, but only to wake them up. Now after a pitcher is thrown, or during an off day, then these exercises can be done more extensively. The selection of these exercises is based on EMG studies done by Dr. Wilk, Mike Reno, Dr. Andrews, and others. So first we have sideline external rotation. And based on the EMG studies, this exercise actually proved to be the most effective for targeting the infraspinatus and teres minor. So a couple cues. First notice the positioning. 
Once again, the shoulder is properly retracted back and the elbow is nicely tucked on the side and remains in contact with the side throughout the whole movement. Um, second, notice the weight. It's two and a half pounds and that's plenty for, for any athlete. And then third, notice the tempo. How uh, there's a nice pause at the top and really focusing on the lowering phase or the eccentric phase of the movement. Nice, slow, and controlled. Here we have another external rotation exercise at zero degrees of abduction. This is with the use of a band. Um, very similar to the sideline external rotation and very high EMG activity for the teres minor and infraspinatus. A um, couple cues, notice how the elbow stays tucked to the side at the end range and that, so that elbow isn't migrating away from our body but we have a nice scapular control in that the shoulder stays retracted and keeps that elbow in place. I know that you can even use a towel to keep in between the elbow and the side to really hammer on that point of keeping the elbow tucked. Now we're moving into external rotation at 90 degrees of abduction. And here I'm getting into a half kneeling stance to just give a little more challenge to the core. You can also perform this exercise standing, but just make sure that the band stays at about eye level height. Um, that's important so that uh, we're not pulling upwards on the band, but that it's staying in a smooth line of resistance. And then also notice how the elbow is slightly in front of the shoulder. That keeps that shoulder in a good a good position um, so we're not creating an impingement in the front of the shoulder but keeps it in the scapular plane. And then lastly we have W's or a bilateral external rotation at zero degrees of abduction. And this exercise is great because it once again fires those posterior cuff muscles but also includes some lower trap involvement and uh, it's just a great postural exercise. I mean, you do a few of these without even using a band, and it just puts you in a good position. And I know that uh, kids these days with the age of cell phones and computers and video games, we're kind of always slumped forward in those, that anterior shoulder position, which creates an impingement naturally. So this kind of helps you open up that upper back and set those shoulders back in a good position. And so these can also be done with a band around the wrist, which I'm grabbing to add a little bit more resistance, add a little more of a challenge. Um, they don't, they obviously don't have to be, but this is just a plain uh, TheraBand. But notice how the elbows stay tucked. Uh, they're not migrating away from the sides, and it's just strictly using the posterior muscles and even a little bit of lower trap recruitment. Now we'll demonstrate some internal rotation strength exercises, or more specifically, strengthening the muscles on the anterior part of our shoulder. So here we have the band internal rotation at zero degrees of abduction, uh, very similar to the banded external rotation, but our body is just flipped on the other side where our throwing arm is on the near side of the band and we're turning the hand into the body. Uh, same cues apply where the elbow is nice and tucked to the side but here we want to make sure that when the hand is coming in towards the stomach the shoulder doesn't roll in towards our waistline um, so just make sure that, that the shoulder is set in a good position and then here's the band internal rotation at 90 degrees uh, the shoulder the elbow is slightly in front of the shoulder so that it, the humeral heads in a good position the band is at eye level height and there's a slow controlled eccentric on the way back So now we're going to demonstrate some stabilization exercises. And these exercises are great because remember, the rotator cuff muscles, we not only want them to be strong, but they also have to be timely. Meaning they have to fire very fast and just at the right time in order to stabilize the humeral head effectively. So these are great exercises to run through real quick right before you throw to really turn those muscles on and activate those muscles so that the the signals that are being sent by the brain are traveling very quickly 
so they can stabilize the humeral head at the just the right time when we're throwing the baseball. So the first progression will be the quad position stabilizations. So here the athlete will be on all fours in the quad position because inherently this provides the most stability since their hands and knees are in contact with the floor. It's a closed chain exercise. Um, and again, with all these stabilization exercises, I would only hold about 10 to 15 seconds for each position. Uh, it doesn't have to be too intensive. Again, the goal is just to wake up the rotator cuff muscles, not fatigue them. So a couple cues for this exercise. Notice how I'm gently pressing on the athlete's arm in all directions where he's not falling all over the place, but he is remaining relatively stable because that is the goal of the drill. Um, but yeah, just push in all positions uh, so the athlete doesn't know where they're coming from and it should be able to wake, that, wake the rotator cuff muscles right up. And then a progression to this exercise, once they get good at that, is have them raise the opposite hand. And what this do will just provide well, the more next challenge progression would have the to the core and uh, uh, more challenge to stabilize position. that shoulder. <clears throat> Basically lying on their back with their throwing okay. arm straight out towards the ceiling, but they're in about 100 degrees of flexion and 15 degrees of abduction. Now again, you'll use two fingers to gently press on all sides of the forearm, uh, making sure that the athlete's hand does not deviate far from the starting position. Now remember, if their hand is going all over the place, then you're pressing too hard and they're just not stabilizing. Now you'll notice that this athlete is pretty stable. Uh, he's, he has a lot of experience doing these exercises. So it's definitely an acquired skill. You'll see that uh, the competence level increases rapidly. But if athletes are having trouble at first, you can start by this, by just pushing in two directions, which makes the exercise a little bit easier to stabilize. Now the last exercise of the stabilization drills is quite challenging, and I would not recommend jumping right into this, but uh, progressing the athlete through until they show that they're competent in the earlier phases. Um, but here we'll just have the athlete in three positions of the baseball throw in the half kneeling position and we're only going to spend about uh, 10 to 15 seconds at each position. So here we can see the three positions that the athlete's arm should be in and a big cue for this is just making sure that those positions are similar to the natural arm path that the athlete has while throwing the baseball. And then the final position the shoulder should be in front of the hips simulating full extension just after ball release <laughs> 